everyone, it's Gordon Einstein, your Dubai crypto attorney. I'd like to welcome Jason Myers back onto the show for a brief demonstration of the Pacioli platform. Uh, Jason, just give us literally the one minute recap of what it does, and then we're gonna you're gonna share your screen and walk us through its use. Okay. Very simple. It's a crypto asset disclosure infrastructure with a deepen external validation protocol. So you create your disclosure, your white paper, under VARA or MICA. Mm -hmm. uh, you can invite others to contribute to it. You'll be required to because others are responsible for contributing their disclosure. You'd send it out for external validation by either the network or a private cohort. And then it'll get published on the Pacioli Explorer which will be the destination on Web3 for all compliant projects. Awesome. Show it to us. So what I'm going to show you now is um, the Luca suite. There's two components, critical components to the protocol. One is the Luca suite. The other is Pacioli itself, which is a validating node. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. If you can just I let me know. So I can actually see this. Can you just let me know that you're seeing? We can see your screen. You can see my screen. Okay. So uh, what I can do here is show you our own white paper for Pacioli.ai, which was published two days ago. We announced the rollout of the products yesterday, which was Mika Day, right? June thirtieth. And um, oh my gosh, it was Mika Day. We should have a celebration. <laughs> yesterday was Mika Day. Yes. Okay, that's right. Well, today is really Mika Day. It's Monday, right? Yeah. So, um, let me do this. I am going to start from scratch by creating a report and we will call it Mika Day nice. white paper right so we'll add um, you'll have to add your company name mm -hmm. in our case it's audit chain labs Right, you have to enter an LEI. Let me grab it from the other white paper. Okay. Here, sorry about that. Here we are. Copy. That's the LEI code. Reporting into the aspect is LEI with the poll, and then. Are you on the same street as Crypto Valley and Sug, Domstrasse? Domstrasse. Everybody's my neighbor. Wow. Everyone's my neighbor. Okay, logo. Choose file, mm -hmm. right? We'll just choose that. We'll save. Please match the requested format. This is where it gets a little tricky. Please fill out this field with Verlin. What I'm hoping doesn't happen, but if it does, it'll actually demonstrate how powerful the system is. You're not allowed to make mistakes. It doesn't let you, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you're composing a financial statement. That's really important, right? So this way you can, without any experience using structured data, mm -hmm. you can literally create a set of complete, accurate, compliant financial statements without being a structured data expert. So now let's call it the Mika Day white paper. Check your spelling. So you can... Okay. 
So there are many ways to initiate creating a report. First is you can create a model from scratch, right? That is specific to your project, your company, right? Okay. So you can create an Annex 1, Annex 2, or Annex 3 model. You can mix different elements in with each of those models. So if you if you're actually a US company complying with Mika and you include um, US GAAP financial statements with an IFRS wrapper, you can create that kind of model. But what we're going to do just to show you is um, we're going to create a report from the template. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose any of these financial schemes in this case nice. uh, no, uh, sorry reporting scheme we're going to just choose the Mika prototype that gives you all three annexes so I click next right mm -hmm. here are all of the annexes and parts that uh, we created using this master Mika model did that so, just happen just now on the fly yeah what do you mean? Is everything on the right? Sorry, the right is what you're creating or what is what has been created? So it, it's a meta model, right? So you, we've created these models already as structured data experts, and we've provided them for users to select and customize. So what I'm doing right now is I'm a utility token, and I am going to choose uh, these models, right? Mm -hmm. So, underlying technology, information on rights, information about the crypto asset itself, mm -hmm. uh, about the offer to the public. The project, we are not an operator. An operator is going to be someone like an exchange who is required to contribute their disclosure information, right? But we are the issuer. We are also the offerer. So because we're not hiring an intermediary to offer it for us or place the offering for us. Um, and then I click next. And that gives me the model that I have that I that I uh, I need to create my white paper. Nice, right? Now here are the templates. Now so look, this to the average person, this doesn't look that complicated, but there is a boatload of structured data schema that complies with regulations under the hood. We've tried to make it as easy as possible for someone to just copy and paste the white paper they drafted already, right? So rather than take up the time, what I will do is for your viewers, I'm just going to go straight to the white paper we created for us. So now we added a general information, which is a page one, which Mika says you have to add. Yes. And We've added all of our items on page one. We also added a glossary of terms to help people understand what some of these definitions mean, right? So once you're done creating your white paper, right, you'll begin to prepare some, as, uh, here's some information about the, ass, uh, the, the, the issuer which is us. You have to put in the management, right? No anonymity allowed anymore. Um, no what allowed anymore? Anonymity. Can't be anonymous. You need an LEI to associate the company with the commercial register in the member state that you're organized in, okay. which connects to the individuals who you will enter in the management section, right? The only white paper aspect is the description of the crypto asset project. 
and the crypto asset itself. And then for people familiar with the ICO days, the information about the offer itself, right? And all of the elements about the offering. In our case, we are offering 2,200 Pacioli nodes so that stakeholders in crypto can operate nodes and earn income to offset compliance and help the space move into compliance, nice. right? Earn money from compliance. Who does that? Regulators. Now we do, and you can too. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to validate this by clicking validate. Just give me a minute. Mm -hmm. And there, right? You've got a validation that illustrates that we've passed, in this case for this model, all four um, categories. Does, does that mean so that you'll add an I... additional. Go ahead. You'll add an additional category, uh, 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 five categories when you include financial statements. We did not include financial statements under Mika. The utility token, that would be us, is the only one not required to provide financial statements. I understand. But you had a question or a comment. Uh, maybe you kind of answered it. Five through seven aren't generated or they don't need to comply. S say that again. Items five through nine without the check marks are not generated or they don't need to comply. Those rules are not run because these are for financial statements. There's no okay, financial that's what you information. Just made. So all those right, items are financial statements? Five through nine. Okay. You include yeah, you include one through four in financial statements for a total of nine, but for a white paper with non financial reporting data only, it's really one through four. Okay. Right? Yes. So now I'll go back. And now that I've passed, I will generate an inline XBRL, beautiful, glossy, high quality white paper. And we will call it Pacioli.ai, a Web3 crypto asset disclosure. Right? Okay. White paper. Version 1.0. Now, watch this. You can enter the company name, but the average person's just going to enter the company name. If you want to make it machine readable, which you should, just type in issuer. Name of crypto asset issuer. And that draws it from the schema, right? Oh, nice. Okay. And then today is July 1st, 2024. And now we're going to choose a style sheet. Pacioli. Mm -hmm. Right? You'll be able to choose Satoshi, by the way, which is a style that looks like the Satoshi white paper. Uh, and we're adding a ton of other uh, CSS formats. So let's publish this. Voila. Beautiful. Imagine that. And here, look, here's the machine readable title. Here's all the machine readable elements. It drills all the way down to the actual law section of the law. Information about the issuer, right? Here's your link. If I click that link, if I click that link, it takes me right to Annex one, right? Here's the information about the issuer. This is the actual parliamentary law entered into the, their equivalent of the federal register, right? And so, huh. All right, so now you have this, what do you do with it? You do this. You publish it, 
you create a page on your website with a tab for white papers and a tab for disclosures, which is similar to an 8K. So when you, when you have um, inside information that you release, mm -hmm. right, you put it here and you put your white papers here. Now, what you have to do, unlike the old days where projects would just replace the existing white paper with a new one, nobody would know what the changes were, you have to leave the changes well, you have to, each revision has to remain here, right? So that when somebody comes to visit your website, you they click the white paper and voila. So there's a trail, if you like, of the prior changes? That's really correct. Like That's correct. That is right. And you summarize the changes for people, right? Be nice about it. The second version will have, this is the second preliminary version. Um, we added this, that, or the other thing. Nice. But this is where all the magic occurs in here, right? This is uh, for a somewhat advanced users, right? You have your base information taxonomy, mm -hmm. right? You've got your terms. This is all part of the model, right? You have your references. As you can see, it references the law itself. Um, all the facts that you entered, right? So when I go back, I, I can edit the model by adding another structure. If I want to add a new structure. So these are jigs. A jig is an element or a series of elements of a financial statement that have relationships to one another that contain formulations and calculations. And if there's accountants who are watching this, they're either going to know exactly what I mean or they're tax accountants that use other software and they're not structured data in, uh, experts. Okay. But the point is you can add or extend to the model in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, we actually invited our attorney uh, our law firm to collaborate on Luca and make whatever changes they feel are necessary in order to publish and file a final version with, uh, looks like we're going to choose Germany as our jurisdiction for the first to file, who will coordinate it with the other 27 EU member states who are each responsible for their own infrastructure to um, capture these new crypto asset white papers and code them and coordinate with ESMA. But that's, you know, look, it, it would take an entire day to actually demo uh, this I entire the highlights. Is, is there anything else? Remember, this is, an, this is like an add-on to the other video. Is there anything else you want to hit for the audience? Well, sure. You're going to be able to, uh, okay, let me show you something here. We took MicroStrategy and imported it into Luca from the SEC, right? And um, I think it's here, in fact, on the validation dashboard. Hold on, MicroStrategy, here it is. Let's look at the details. This is an analysis of MicroStrategy. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they failed XBRL calculations. They failed some fundamental accounting concepts. So when you load it into Luca, mm -hmm. you can look at each. Look, if you're the controller or if you're a CFO who owns 4% of the company because you work for BlackRock or whoever, you would use this to determine, see, here's an inconsistency, to determine how reliable these financial statements actually are. Right. Okay. Most of the time it's trivial errors, but the analyst can't seem to be able to aggregate the data smoothly enough. So he's got to kind of perform some surgery. But what this will allow you to do is correct some of these things after talking to the controller or the office of the controller or the investor relations department who will uh, either be alerted to an error they didn't know or they will reconcile it for the analyst making the call or could be a lot worse depending on the company who it you know depending upon who the company is right 
So the Pacioli Explorer is going to look like this. This is an act. This is an actual pilot we did with our community with actual data using 3,000 uh, uh, companies who filed financial statements in the second quarter of 22. The red dot indicates they violated one or more fundamental accounting concepts. Right? And here's a dashboard that will show you a summary of those violations. If you want to know the exact nature of those violations, well, you got to pay. Right? So if you're the company, you'll be able to import it into Luca, correct and remediate what you did wrong, what your audit committee didn't see, what your CFO didn't see, your CEO didn't see, your auditor didn't see, and um, call the lawyer because nobody wants to refile, right? But going forward, you'll use Luca and you won't make these mistakes. So, okay. Yep. Fascinating. Yeah. Is Took us a long to find, time to build it. Is there a way to find reports that are way out of kilter? Well, 50%, almost 50% 50 of all financial reports filed with the SEC um, have some sort of inconsistency. Could be as trivial as a syntax error or, you know, the balance sheet didn't balance and there's violations like they. Are you able to find, like, is there any kind of like materiality trigger that you can put in or add on? If you want to create your own rules, you can create your own materiality triggers by creating your own analysis rules, right? So, for instance, if six periods in a row, their balance sheet didn't balance, you want to be able to detect that, right? And you can do all sorts of other stuff. So, if I want to be an activist investor, for example, yeah, a lot I of people. I can troll through at light speed and see who's playing games. Maybe you can, you can, yes. But although one report does not make a fraud detector, right? No, but it gives me a place to look. Yes, it, it, for the trained eye, um, over the course of a number of periods, you can detect patterns that might illustrate a bad risk culture or a failure to implement correct or sound internal controls over financial reporting. Or, you know, if you look at item, for instance, 10Ks are really explicit. There's an item 9A in 10, Form 10K, uh, which talks about internal controls specifically and disclosure controls. And usually the statements are uh, our disclosure controls are sufficient for the size and complexity of the organization. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they outsource structured financial disclosure to a third party, right? And that third party could either further outsource or those financial statements are being built and tagged, if you will, by non-accountants that are just looking at a schema and uh, may not exercise the same level of care that a controller would whose audit committee chair is looking over his shoulder, right? So what ends up happening is without even knowing it, it turns that statement into a lie because once you outsource financial reporting, it is no longer under your control, right? If you use well, Luca- depends how you define control. Well, under your, right, exactly. We, we won't go into that, right? So, but if you use Luca, it's the world's first content management system for structured disclosure. It tucks all the complexities under the hood so you don't have to be an expert, right? And you have complete control over what you create and what you publish, right? This is cool, Jason. Yep, so that's it. All right, so for our demo, oh. anything else to show? Uh, well, you don't have the time. Well, I want to keep it short and sweet. So, ladies and gentlemen, I gave an overview. I gave an overview, a broad stroke overview of the concept.
creating a white paper, submitting it for validation, right? Inviting somebody. Um, the Pacioli Explorer, uh, that'll show every compliant crypto project to the same extent I just showed you all those red dots for, is that there will be green dots, right? Um, and we think they will, because if they use Luca, we're the only Web3 crypto asset disclosure platform. Mm -hmm. And as of today, yesterday, everybody's out of compliance. Only very few people are ready for this. In fact, when it comes to white papers, nobody is ready. This is great. So we're going to give, we're going to give everyone a free disclosure. Your first disclosure will be free, right? Mm -hmm. um, just to help the space move into compliance, right? All right, Jason, let me stop the recording just because I wanted this to be the like the fast demo of the product, and I think you did a great job. Thanks. And uh, we'll, we'll include the link and how to reach you in the show notes, yes? Yeah. Good. All right. Good. Thank you, everyone, for watching.